Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with six more budget Christmas home decor DIYs. I hope you enjoy them, so let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, we're going to use a few items from Hobby Lobby to create this Joy to the World sign. This is a 12 by 12 wood canvas. They come three in a pack. The Joy to the World large sign is in the Christmas crafts and then the scrapbook paper. So taking one of these wood canvases, I am taking my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I am painting the frame all the way um, on, around the edges, on the sides, and also completely on the back. I did come a little bit onto the front, but I didn't need to paint the entire thing because I'm going to Mod Podge that wood grain paper on it. Now this is marked $4.99, but Christmas Crafts pretty much all season long are 50% off, so $2.50 for this, and it's gorgeous. I am gonna take some wood filler and fill in the hole for the hanger. You don't absolutely need to do this, especially if you're going to put a bow at the top like I am going to, but this just fills it in and then sand it a little bit to help cover that up. Now I'm going to paint the words on this sign with my Crimson Waverly chalk paint. Just take your time with this and use a small brush so that you can just apply the paint to the top trying to not let it go down the sides of the words. So I'm just gonna go around and do Joy to the World all in crimson, and then I'm going to do the leaves going around in my Waverly chalk paint in the color Fern. The only places you really need to take some extra time is where a leaf touches a letter, but even then, um, just use a small brush and you should be fine. I just did one coat and then if there were any spots that I missed, I did touch up those spots and then I did spray this and the wood frame with a matte clear spray. Now the inside of this sign is about 11 inches square, so I did have to cut down my scrap of paper just a tiny bit in order for it to be able to fit inside the frame. I love this Fiskars paper trimmer. It is located in my Amazon storefront. If you are interested, I like that you can just buy new blades when you need to. Now that my sign is dry, or my frame, I'm going to apply a layer of matte finish Mod Podge on the entire inside, and then I will spritz a little bit of water on the back of my paper and smooth that down onto the inside. You can see I'm also coming up the edges of the sign and also doing the front of the frame, just so everything has a uniform finish to it um, with the Mod Podge. Again, just put your paper down and smooth that out, getting out any possible air bubbles. And once you've done that, just set it aside to dry. Once it is completely dry, I did do another layer of the matte finish Mod Podge over the top to get it ready to have the Joy to the World sign attached to the front. Then using some of the Fix All Adhesive from Dollar Tree, I'm just putting it on a few of the leaves that will hold this sign to the frame of the square sign and getting that lined up and set that aside to dry. And then the last finishing, finishing touch, I'm taking this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. It's in their Christmas craft section and just making a simple bow. And then I will glue that over where the hole was for the hanging um, ornament sign when I bought this from Hobby Lobby. And it's as simple as that. We just took a few items from Hobby Lobby and some paint and created this beautiful art piece. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. 
I hope if you are one of my returning viewers or subscribers, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. I would not be where I am with my YouTube channel without you coming back each and every week and your encouraging comments as well. I hope everyone will click the bell and check your notifications. Make sure they're set to all so YouTube will notify you each time I upload new content or go live here on my channel. DIY number two, we're going to make these easy Christmas houses. These are so beautiful and so easy to do. I'm using some wood houses that were in the Target's dollar spot last year, but you can find house shapes in wood from Hobby Lobby, even from Dollar Tree. You can cut them yourself as well. What I'm gonna do on these houses is I'm gonna give them a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint on all of the sides and the front and back. Then I'm gonna use these new Magnolia stencils. They're called the Arabesque Ornaments. We're just gonna use three of the words. It actually comes with six different words in the set. And after fuzzing my stencil, I'm just gonna place these three words down on the front of each of my houses. Hope, peace, and joy, I thought were good Christmas words. I chose to line the top of my stencil up where the roof started to um, angle in, but you can feel free to place these wherever you want. I do feel like the Joy one ended up a little high, so probably I would come down on that taller house. Then just using some of my black chalk paste, we'll just squeegee that across the mesh of the stencil and then have our three words stenciled onto our houses. You will want to let that dry and then spray it with the clear matte spray so that they can't come off. If these houses were to get wet, that chalk paste would run unless you spray it with the clear spray. I just love the font of these words. I think they're so elegant and beautiful. You could even just leave the houses like this with just the white and the words in black but I saw these little wreath, they're actually stickers, they're supposed to be for scrapbooking, but I just added a little hot glue and put these wreaths with the little bows on the top of each house. And these definitely were good sellers in my past craft shows. I made them a little bit differently, but I will probably sell this set um, of three houses for about $12. DIY number three are going to be these vintage inspired chunky ornaments using these three different chunky shapes from Dollar Tree and this classic vintage Christmas paper pad from Michaels. I used to do a lot of paper crafting so I was having fun going through my stash of my Christmas papers and was inspired to make this set of three ornaments on the back side and all of the side edges of my shapes I'm going to use my antique wax using a baby wipe. This really does use less of the product. Um, it is a little messier for your hands, but if you don't mind, it washes off pretty easily. Just using a baby wipe and the antique wax, and it's kind of the two steps in one. Once those were dry, I did choose three different background papers and three little um, images. And so just turning this to the back of the paper, I'm tracing the shape with a pencil and then we're cutting it out and then we will mod podge those on to the front or the unpainted side of our chunky ornaments. I just thought this paper was really, really cute. I think Michaels every year has um, a vintage type of looking paper pad, but feel free to use whatever paper in whatever style that you choose. You can do this idea for any theme and any color scheme. Once we had all of our shapes cut out, like I said, we're gonna use our matte finish Mod Podge, put a layer of it on the unpainted side of our chunky wood ornament, spritz a little bit of water on the back of our scrapbook paper shape and smooth those down and then we will let those dry completely.
Once that scrapbook paper was dried all the way, I did use my little sander in a downward motion just to clean up the edges of all three of my ornament shapes. And then I took my Mod Podge again and put another layer over the entire front of my ornament. And then we will lay down the little image that I chose for each one. I just thought this Santa was so cute and I love the pink paper with the Christmas trees on it. So this layer of Mod Podge will seal on our background paper. It will also help us attach the little icon image. And then once those are dry, I will do one more layer of Mod Podge over the entire thing to keep everything from peeling off. Then once everything was dry, I did use a paper piercer to put my hole back through to the front of my scrapbook paper there. And then using some jute twine, we're gonna go through the hole and then make a hanger for our ornament. I decided to use these three colored beads. These were on a Walmart beaded garland at Christmas time. I actually believe I'm seeing these in the stores again now, but I liked these colors and I thought they matched perfectly for these vintage ornaments. So I'm just gonna string five beads on each hanger then tie a knot and trim it um, to finish off these ornaments. And here they are finished. I just love these, think they're so adorable. And I love that you can take this idea and again, make it for whatever theme or color scheme that you want for your Christmas tree. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and they'll show it to more and more people. DIY number four is going to be this Dollar Tree Triangle Tree. I've been seeing these triangle shelves again in some of my stores and I love making Christmas trees with them and a wood block. We'll also use some scrapbook paper and some other wood shapes. So when I use my little knife there, I can separate the back of this triangle shelf or wall sitter, whatever it is, from the frame. And that really is the easiest way to cover the back with a different paper. I did decide to use this green music paper again and just trace to the triangle, cut that out, and then we will Mod Podge that over the orange and white zigzag pattern that was originally on this triangle. So once you have it trimmed up and lined up, again, just put a little bit of Mod Podge then we'll just spritz a little bit of water on the back of our scrapbook paper and lay that down, smooth it out, and set it aside to dry completely. And once that's dry, you can use your knife to trim off any excess paper that is hanging over the edge if you didn't quite cut it exactly the right size. Then we will take our truffle chalk paint and I'm going to just darken up the front edge of my triangle here. This is optional, you don't have to do this. I'm just using a very small brush and painting that little MDF edge. Then I'm also going to paint this block with the same truffle chalk paint. This will be the trunk of our tree.
This wood ornament is from Hobby Lobby's Christmas Crafts. Um, I think you get like six of them in the package. And it just says, A Very Merry Holly Jolly Christmas. I am brightening this up with my Crimson Waverly Chalk Paint. Again, just using a very small brush to try to just get the paint on the very tops of the words. And then I did spray this with a matte clear spray um, to seal everything in. I decided on these two snowflakes, which are from Dollar Tree. They're the ones that are stickers. They have the little foam sticky dot on the back. I decided to use this clear glitter glue. It didn't really show up on camera, but um, looks really pretty in person. Then when I'm ready to put the frame back on my background of my tree, I'm just running a bead of hot glue all along that frame. And then I'm gonna stand it up and kind of match the two pieces together, trying to get them lined up perfectly as possible. Then taking some of this thicker floral wire, I'm gonna make a small little beaded wreath. Um, I think I ended up putting like maybe 15 of these beads on, but you can make this um, however big or small you wanted. These would make really cute ornaments too, just to use these small beads and make these little wreaths. You'll see in our next project that we're going to use some bigger ones that I found at Hobby Lobby already made. So this is how I'm gonna lay everything out. I'm also gonna make this teeny tiny little ribbon bow for the top of that little beaded wreath um, to cover up where the wire is. Then once all of our pieces are ready, we'll go ahead and hot glue everything down. This is another one of those projects that you can take the basic idea and literally create thousands of different versions of this based on the scrapbook paper you use on the back and whatever you put inside your tree. So even if you don't like the one I made, feel free to take this idea and really just make it your own decorating these. These would make great little gifts, little hostess gifts. I believe I sold these last year a little differently in my craft show for about $8 a piece. Once all of our decorations were glued down, next I put some glue on the bottom and we're going to attach the wooden cube. This one was a little bit large for this tree, so I decided to add a little bit of greenery there on top of the part of the block that stuck out past the tree. Again, depending on what supplies you use, you can um, add this greenery and foliage or leave it off. If you are on Facebook and have not done so already, I would love it if you would head to my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page if you would like it and follow it. I'm trying to grow that audience as well. And I do go live three times a week on my Facebook page with different DIYs than I'm doing here on YouTube. For DIY number five, we're going to combine these beaded wreath ornaments from Hobby Lobby along with these black chalkboard circles and these Christmas mini stencils from Magnolia. So I thought these were an awesome find. They're a really good size. You get three of them in the package, which is marked $3.99, which is actually $2 right now. So for less than a dollar a piece, you get these really nice, sturdy, beaded ornaments. 
And so I decided to paint one of them with my crimson chalk paint. The second one we will paint with fern and the third one we will paint with white. But of course you could maybe do these a little faster if you spray painted them, but they're pretty easy to hold on to because they're on the wire. So this didn't take very long to paint them with a small little paintbrush. So these are the Christmas mini stencils from Magnolia. My idea was to stencil a design on each of the three black circles and then hang them in the center of the beaded ornament. So I'm gonna use the Nativity one and this Merry Christmas that has a little Christmas tree and then also this patterned Christmas tree. And we're going to, first of all, fuzz our stencil a little bit so that we're able to peel it up easily from our chalkboard circle. Press that down, and once I have all three of them down, we will just very quickly use a small amount of chalk paste in a few different colors and stencil these images onto our black circles. And now my favorite part, the peel and reveal. I love to see the beautiful stenciled images that were so easy to do. We'll let these dry for a little bit and then I did spray them with the clear matte spray so that they wouldn't um, come off if they got wet. Now I am using a crocodile here. This, if you haven't seen one before, it's used a lot in paper crafting. This punches two different size holes and did pretty easily the hole on these chalkboard circles it was just getting it off of the <laughs> the little peg took a little bit of wiggling but we got those off and then we're just going to put a piece of jute twine through the hole and then i'm going to tie it to the top of our beaded wreath so that it hangs down in the center And here are my finished ornaments. Again, this is one of those ideas that you can do so many different ways. I hope you enjoyed and got inspiration from this idea. For a list of all of the supplies I'm using in today's projects, please check the description box below the title of this video. There you will see a list by project of the supplies I'm using, as well as links to my Amazon storefront and my Magnolia Design Co. website. And DIY number six is one I've wanted to do for a while. I wanted to take this little wooden treasure box from Hobby Lobby and these peg people and create my own nativity set. So the first thing I'm going to do is using a baby wipe again and my antique wax, I am going to stain the entire outside of my little treasure box. Now this is an idea that would make a great um, gift, a very unique gift for someone, maybe a child, maybe for someone that just collects different types of nativities. I enjoyed making this one. This is not something that you could probably mass produce very quickly. I really enjoyed taking my time to paint the inside of the box and create each of the figures. So like I said, I'm probably going to put this in my craft show, um, but just have the one and if it doesn't sell, that's okay because I really enjoyed making it and would love to keep it.
So now that the outside of the box is dry, I'm going to paint two different scenes on the inside of the box. On the right hand side, I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Hazelnut. It's just kind of like a light wood color and just first of all paint that entire inside. Then on the left side, I'm going to do a dark blue. Um, I did add a little bit of the night sky to ocean, but I don't think it changed the color much. So you could just do a dark blue like ocean or some other acrylic paint that you have and do that on the entire left side of the box. And this side is curved because it is where the lid is. Now the right hand side of my box is going to be inside the stable. So I wanted to make a window. I cut a two and a half inch square piece of chipboard that I could then trace around so I could have straight lines to then paint what would be outside the window with that same blue color of chalk paint. Once the blue for my window was dry, I did take that square and place it down again. And I traced around the outside with a black fine tip paint marker. This is going to give me the outline for my window. And then I am going to do a horizontal line and a vertical line on my window to make it be in four sections. You can see also on the left side that I painted a green kind of hill. This is going to be the shepherd side of the nativity. And now taking a white fine tip paint marker, I'm just putting some stars in the sky and then making little sheep on the hill. These would be very far away. So I'm just doing like squiggle blobs <laughs> to be some sheep on the hill. Then on the right hand side, I will do some more stars in the window of the um, stable, one big star for the Star of Bethlehem, and then some more small ones. Now for my peg people, these are the three angels. These are my two shepherds. These are gonna be animals. And then this is Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus. So I, for my three angels, I used a gold paint marker to paint their heads gold. And then I am going to paint their bodies white. We will also add a little halo to their heads. Then for Mary, I decided to use Peacock for her uh, dress or her tunic that she's wearing. I decided to just keep all of the heads, a new, the neutral wood color, um, except for the angels that I painted gold. This is one of the shepherds. I painted his clothing with truffle. And then one of them was already painted like a dark maroon color so I just kept it that. This is Joseph. I painted his with hazelnut and then uh, baby Jesus I just painted like his body white as if he's wrapped like in swaddling clothes. Now this one I'm going to paint all white. This is going to be a sheep and I have four small beads that I will also paint white that will be the legs. And then, like I said, I painted the bodies of the angels with white. I have one larger angel and two smaller ones. I used a piece of a bamboo skewer that I cut into pieces and also painted with the gold paint marker. These are going to be the shepherd's crooks or the staffs for our two shepherds. And then here are the legs for my sheep. I'm just gluing two sets of two beads together. And then we'll glue the body on top of those legs. 
I also have a gray animal. I guess it's a donkey or maybe a goat. <laughs> I do add a couple ears to it. Here's a little pom-pom tail. Sorry, you can't see I'm off camera. There we go, for my sheep. And then, like I said, we'll glue the body across the legs like this. Once the inside of my little nativity was all dry, I did spray it with the clear matte spray. And then here I just put some hot glue on the bottom of the right hand side and put a little bit of raffia to be like hay inside the stable. And then these two little, I think they're checker pieces, but I put two of them um, stacked to make the manger for baby Jesus, put a little bit more hay, and then glued him down there. Then I'm gonna glue our staffs onto our two shepherds to signify that they are in fact the shepherds. And lastly, for my angels, I made three small little halos out of a glittery silver uh, pipe cleaner or chenille stem. And then we will have all of our pieces for our nativity all set and ready to go. And here's how it turned out. You can see I added some more details inside the stable with horizontal lines and smudging up the walls a little bit. And I just love this. I love that all the pieces can fit inside the box as well. Thanks again so much for joining me today. I would love to know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. And we'll see you next time. Take care.